Hi there, I'm Phil. Um, I'm, I've literally just turned 30 years old and last week on Tuesday I was diagnosed with a grade 3 glioma in my front right uh, lobe and as you can see I've had a my first craniotomy but don't worry as you can see it's just a flesh wound <sighs> and that's what I'm going to try and use as my attitude going forward um, stage I'm at the moment it's very difficult because um, tomorrow I go to Clatterbridge for the first time and that will be to see a psychologist because for the past 10 years I have really struggled with anxiety so <clears throat> hopefully if anybody else is going through anything similar I can possibly help you out with ways of coping with that and cancer at the same time so what is a grade 3 glioma? so you can have a 1 which is benign, you can have a 2 which is again benign or you can have a 3 which is what I have and that is cancerous contains anaplastic cells and in the worst case scenario I guess you can get a 4 and that is commonly known as a glioblastoma um, so for the past say three years I've been working as a 3D artist at an amazing company called Gaia Technologies in North Wales I'm very lucky to work with them um, at the moment I'm now working thankfully with a lot of their grace from home just sending them you know, working remotely sending them 3D objects um, one of the troubles I've had with this diagnosis is that because it's work, been working in 3D education for the past three years and my area was working in science I, I almost felt like I knew too much when I came around to my diagnosis so basically as soon as my histology report came back and as soon as my neurosurgeon said anaplastic then I knew exactly that I was in a very difficult situation and it would be well will be going forward um, so I'll have six weeks of radiotherapy to get through at Clatterbridge and um, I've got to say that I had the craniotomy done at the Walton Centre in Liverpool um, and I must say the nurses there are probably my favourite people just how tirelessly they work right into the early hours it's they, they blow me away, really do amazing care um, now the biggest challenge for me of, of course is with having anxiety is I've got to get myself into that zone where you feel positive and failure is not an option and that is very difficult to do when you have anxiety because with anxiety as many of if any of you have it know then your mind basically <coughs> works like a filter that keeps getting clogged up with negative thoughts and I don't know if that was a symptom of a slow growing tumour over the past 10 years or so, I don't know um, well at present nobody knows what causes these tumours um, but I 
the hardest thing has been seeing the effect it has on the people around me. So on that 30th birthday that I mentioned, I <coughs> proposed to my missus, Nicola Love. <laughs> she was there through all the histology, she was there through every time I went to Walton basically, she was there. Seeing her cry and my parents cry was the hardest thing. And my fiance has been there throughout all of this, these past couple of weeks, been the most difficult of my life and it's been mostly difficult seeing how it's affected people around me. Um, whenever someone told me some bad news and I'd turn around and see my family's faces and see them crying, it would set me off. Um, I wouldn't wish this upon anyone. Um, a slight bit of irony is that for the past three years where I've been working at Gaia Technologies um, I was every month I was giving a bit of my wage to Cancer Research UK um, why did I do that? I did that not just in case I got it but just because I knew just you know looking into my research at work how much of a devastating disease this is and how challenging it is scientifically to defeat this thing um, I, I think I've been a bit of a target for what I would call woo since my diagnosis I uh, announced it on Facebook and then you get emails coming through people saying go to Brzezinski uh, the Brzezinski clinic in Houston, Texas or something and, but um, what they people who send me stuff like that are um, probably a bit unaware of is that I'm also a fan of the League of Nerds, and so for the past two years I've been listening to their podcasts. It's um, kept me rational when it comes to what there is in terms of treatment out there. Now, physically I'm fine at the moment. I'm not in any pain since the op. I get up every morning, do stretches, do about five press-ups. Doesn't sound like much, but at the moment, just emotionally, it just feels like a, a nice step forward. Um, <clears throat> it all started on Boxing Day, actually, which is the day after Christmas. <laughs> and um, I had a seizure that lasted around 25 minutes. And I was with my girlfriend. So obviously that freaked her out and uh, I woke up in Countess Hospital in Chester and somebody telling me that I had had an epileptic seizure and my first thought was oh no I can't drive anymore I've got epilepsy um, well I, now obviously I wish that was just the, the real diagnosis um, everything I heard it, I'd been through an MRI and a CAT scan when I was there, coming round from the diazepam, um, and then some 
doctor came to sit in front of my bed, chewing some gum, telling me uh, we have found a mass, uh, it looks to be benign. Um, and then I, the, my first thing that I said in response was, is it in a difficult area? Just knowing what I've known before about these things. And he says, I know what you're trying to ask me, Mr. James. Um, uh, it is, you're trying to ask me if it is inoperable. Uh, it looks to be very operable to me, as it is not on the brain stem, and it is to the right, in the front lobe. Um, so I guess it's somewhere around here. It was about six centimeters in terms of diffuse mass, but there was this tiny white dot um, when I went for my first surgical preparation meeting thing and that white dot was what the surgeon was saying if that white dot wasn't there then I'd say it's just a two if I was to bet my life on it I'd say it is a two though but unfortunately it's a three <clears throat> so the biggest challenge over the next couple of weeks is to try and tackle my anxiety unfortunately with me it manifests as gagging if I get too upset get post nasal drip and then I want to throw up so physically that's problematic um, and yeah talking about it can make it make me feel a bit like that might happen because it's so scary but I've seen you know a few people get through these things um, some people can live 10 years but they have there's few of them um, some people can be very unlucky where they go into remission and then it comes back as a grade 4 and obviously there is a risk that that can happen with me so I need to get into a mindset, a positive mindset, where I can help my immune system beat this thing, get through that six weeks of radiotherapy. Uh, the only thing I'm scared about with the radiotherapy is the damage to the healthy cells, because I know that proton therapy is not available for this, these type of tumours in the UK at the moment. I think we have to wait till about 2018 to get one in Manchester um, I think I should probably leave it there for now as my first video on this journey so tomorrow it's at Glatterbridge for I guess to try and do some CBT or something to get over the diagnosis shock okay I'll try and update you as soon as I can